Alright, Murray, take one. <laughs> we are not the norm. We don't look the same. Um, sometimes we go to places and we get some looks. The number of times he was suspended, the number of times the school was shut down. <laughs> was that our kid? I don't know, we can laugh now. <laughs> we parented my cousin. One of the biggest, most heartbreaking challenges that we faced was having to let him make the decision to try to go back home. So as a kid, I always questioned why my biological mom made an adoption plan for me and not my um, two older sisters. I used to be like, I would never make an adoption plan. I don't understand why people would do that. So I went to this adoption agency and I said, I want to pick the parents. I can't do this and unless I can feel good about who she's going to be going to live with. You know, being black, being adopted, being adopted by two white gay dads, there's a lot of things that people can use against her and that could be really scary and you want to protect your kids as much as possible. I got you, you got this, don't be afraid to feel this feeling is real. It wasn't until she started school that we kind of noticed that she's a little has more a little more energy than the other kids in her class. You know, Brad and I would be in tears, not sure how to help her or what's the appropriate way to discipline her for acting up that is actually going to work. When I was 21, I had I had a daughter without a job and without a partner. I just didn't see any hope for my future in trying to raise this child. And I didn't believe in myself that I could do it. I got you, you got this. Always wondering what my biological family was like, if I was like them, but I just wish I grew up around more people that look like me. Don't be afraid to feel this And so when I turned 18 and moved out, the whole loyalty issue is a real hard part for me because I don't ever want my adoptive mom to feel like I'm trying to replace her or thinking that I'm going to just forget about her. People would assume like that I would be in something so called the hood or something. They ask how it's like in there, but I've never been there. We don't want them to tell their jokes anymore, I think, because we don't want to lose them as friends. I don't know, it's just like that feeling of embarrassment that we don't want to show them that we're afraid of that or it does hurt us. I've got you. He was a, I'm gonna hurt you before you hurt me, which is completely understandable when you look at his history and his life. It took almost a decade of hurt for him to get where he's at. Uh, so if we can remember his past and his experience when we try to set our expectations of him, it's easier to get through them. Adoptive families or foster families, I think, are afraid because they're the people that are supposed to have all the answers. And the bottom line is, none of us have all the answers to any of this. But that doesn't mean we don't try. We keep trying. It felt like he was gone forever. <laughs> and uh, all I could see is, is it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work, why do it? You gotta get this out of your system. You have to see for yourself. You needed to do that. Because I don't think anything that anyone could have done or said would have helped me be less angry. It would have had to do with me meeting my biological family and knowing who they are and then getting to a point in my life where I could process adoption and, I don't know, just be more open to it and more understanding about the decision that my um, biological mom made. I had this friend. I was talking to him and stuff about how I was adopted and then like he goes, oh, I'm sorry. It kind of makes me sad and I was like, you don't really have to be sad, there's like no reason, like I'm really happy with my family and stuff. I wouldn't change my family for the world. 
We had to work on healing individually with each of them, and then we had to work on healing as a family. That's what foster and adoptive parenting is, I think. It's about healing. Not that we're the healers. Right. It's providing the environment and the spot right. for them to be able to heal. If we would have tried to not have him be connected to his mom, that he would not be the success that he is, and that he wouldn't have gone on to do great things. You know, my mom has a song that she made up for me and sings to me to this day whenever I'm calling her crying and things like that. Um, being there on my graduation days or my birthdays or, um, you know, first days of school, you're my mom. Even though you didn't biologically have me, um, you're still there. You were there for me and those things can't be replaced. And we've been a big part of the Coalition of Children, Youth and Families for years and years and years. They've supported us through support groups, through uh, materials to read, through training, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes just to call and talk to somebody. To uh, know that that's there and uh, that it's available, that's um, priceless. We hesitantly signed up for a class, and when we opened the book in that class, the first page was Two Dads and a Child. So we knew we were at the right place at that time. And it helped so much <laughs> when we finally got the help that we needed because Our daughter deserves a fair shot to be successful and to live an incredible life. And we're committed to doing that no matter what. You got this. Some of my favorite family moments are when we're all together in the car because we're all just ridiculous together and make fun of each other and laugh at each other. On our trip to Yellowstone, we rode horses on the mountains. It was really fun. I remember when we were in the car and there was a buffalo right oh, next yeah. to us. It was fun, but it was kind of scary. Yeah. Mom screamed really loud <laughs> when the buffalo stuck its head in the window. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not blood, the love is always going to be there. Like, we're still a family, yet we're a different kind of family. Ba Roompa Roompa Libby and then she repeats that and then she goes through everyone in my family that they love me and then starts it over again. <laughs> I've got you. I've got you. I would do it all again in a second, even the hard times. This is really out of my hands, what is going on? Somebody help me figure this out. We don't know what to do at this point. Yeah. I don't know if I can take care of my kid. I'm always scared. Every day in a new place, it's always scary. I think he was feeling just very rejected by many people many people in his life that had let him down. Her life is worth me saying, all my pride aside, how can I help my child? I got myself back up and I said, we have to do something. And so that's when I started advocating for my son. Uh, my biggest joy is that I get to do this. This is my home. I'm really happy to be here and just given a chance to have a family again. To see him being successful, his value system, and okay, you did get that from us. Those are the kind of things that make it worth it. you